Hey, what is up, everybody? This is your boy AJ Trip. This is the word according to me. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the NBA and some of the things that have been going on with the NBA and the problems that are, well, I, I, don't know, I mean, not problems, but just some, maybe some fixes to happen to the NBA and some of their draft problems and some of their, their tanking issues. But let's, let's start off with the NBA draft. You know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, right now they have a one and done rule. And it says that players must go to college for, or must go to college for one year, or must, you know, they get into their draft when their freshman year, you know. Base, basically, the rule is that they can't come straight out of high school. They have to either go to college or go somewhere else for at least one year. And, um,. Well, what it seems to be is that there seems to be a big effect on those in not only in the NBA but in college. So, and they're thinking about changing the rule, and I think it, and also it also it also what happens is now some of the things that are going on in college now, something like that. So it can help and and, and help both the NBA and the uh, college game. So, um, so here are my thoughts about this. I, I think the first thing. The biggest thing here is right is that we got we gotta just get rid of that rule and we'll go like this: high school players they can enter the draft. That's just it. That's just it. You can come straight out of high school if you want to. You are that if you think you are that good enough. If you think you are that you know good enough, then you can come out of high school and go straight into the NBA draft. I, I think that's a no-brainer. They never should have got rid of that rule. I, I, I know they were saying that maybe all of the young players, you know, was hurting the league or something like that. But I, I, I think now that you can see that the the one and done rules hurting the league is hurt is hurting the the um, the uh, the the game more than the high school players were, and now it's also affecting the college game because you know these players that they, that. They, they don't want to go to college. They want to go straight to the NBA, you know, something like that. So and now they go to college and they, they you know, they take one class or they don't even didn't take classes. For some of you guys, because of the way the schedule, they make the schedule. They just they they enroll, go, you know, play the game, and then they don't even go to class, and then bam, here goes the NFL draft, the NBA draft, and then haven't done crap. So I mean, yeah, this is. Time for a change. We need to make sure that the players can come out of high school. Now, if they go to school, they must stay in college for at least two years. I think this is the way to do it because I think now because baseball and ho apparently hockey also has this where you can come from high school. You can come to high school, both in baseball. I think I don't know about hockey. I don't know about no. I shouldn't say hockey. I should leave that out. But I know in baseball, baseball you can either come out when you're in high school or if you go to college and stay for at least three years so I don't know if you need to you don't need to go three years you don't need to do all of that for the uh, for uh, college basketball just you can go for at least two years at least for two years at least you know you will take some type of class you have some type of college experience there you know something like that and then and, and so all of that can be settled right then and there so you know, sure, if you you can come out of high school, but if you go to college, you gotta go to college for at least two years. So, your sophomore year, you can come out. And I, and I think that's perfect. I think that's perfect. Now there are gonna be guys who are who think they're better than they are, right? They think they're better than they are, and they will come out of high school and then they won't get drafted so I think the way you do this with this one is is that if these players are not, are not drafted but they don't hire an agent because I, 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 I kind of agree that if you go there 
you know, and you hire agent, then, you know, okay, then you are forfeiting your rights as an amateur. I would be okay with that. That rule, I think that's okay. So I, I think if you if you in, if you are if you put yourself up for the draft, and you don't get drafted, but you don't hire an agent, then you can go to school. But you still must stay for those two years. You hear me? So. If if, 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 if if Billy Watson, you know, goes to you know, King High School, wherever, and he says, you know what, I think I'm good enough, I'm going to come out, but I'm not going to hire an agent. Just in case, and it goes through the entire NBA draft, and bam, there is you know he's not drafted. Okay, so I wasn't drafted, but I didn't hire an agent, so I still can be an amateur. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to the University of whatever, and I'm going to go two years, hone my game, and in two years I'm going to get drafted. And I, and I think that's a perfect. I think that's a perfect rule. I think that's how it's supposed to go. Get yeah, because yeah, as an 18 year old, if you can die for your country and so many other things you can do when you're 18 years old, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to try to make a living. And if you're not good enough to make that living, if I then go then go and get your training, which would be the college. You know, so that you can make the living, so that you can still try to make your living. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I doesn't think that just because you don't get drafted, then you have no other play, you know, other way, you know, to try to enhance your training or anything like that. So uh, uh, that that that's part one of my. You know, college entrance draft fix. Uh, I think I have another. I think I have a, a, a part two here. I, I think you know this. Is a, one thing that can help the NBA can help, right? Because I, I, I think basically what that is. That's mostly on the college side where I gave you part one, right? So this is the, what the NBA side. I think what the NBA can do. I think. The first thing the NBA can do is they can add, a, a, add another round. Now, right now, right now, it is a two-round draft. Let's make it three rounds, right? Let's make it three rounds. So here's what you do, right? Three rounds. And here's what we do: we we come for these high school students, right? These people who come straight out of high school. If you are a high school kid and you are drafted in the first round, you can immediately from day one be on the main roster. So that means if you are good enough, if you are the Amari Stoudemire, the Kevin Garnett, the Kobe Bryant, the LeBron James, the whoever. If you are good enough to be selected in the first round, and you can be on the main roster immediately. Now that doesn't mean that you are not, you know, that you have to be on it. If if if, if they think that you know if the team believes that you need to go down to the thing, then that's totally fine. You go down to the G League, that's totally fine. But if you're good enough, you can be on the main roster from day one, opening night, if you are selected in the first round and you would come straight from high school now if you came straight from high school and you were selected in the second round you have to start in the G League you have to there's no if ands or buts about it no matter how good you played in the preseason no matter how good you played in summer league no matter what you have to start in the G League however you can be promoted to the main roster after the All-Star break. 
So that way, you know, you get your chance. You get a chance to be around some veterans, to learn the league, to you know, maybe learn how the NBA game is played. But still, you have the opportunity to improve and get better. And if you are, and if you even even though you were selected in the second round, but if you were that good, you still get the opportunity to play. You know, that year promoted after the All Star break. And now here's where the big one comes in, right? The third round. If you are selected in the third round, you must play your first year in the G League and you don't get called up at all. At all. You play you play your entire first year in the G League. You're you you are immediately sent down and you play your first year there and then year two is when you would be able to be um, called up and play on the main roster. And I think this all what and this has to be an NBA thing. The NBA has this G League and they need to develop it, develop it more and make sure everybody has a team and make sure everybody has has players. And I think they can do this. I really do think they can do this. The G League over time has has helped teams. I think. Rudy Gobert was a G League player, and a couple other players were G League players as well. They've come up and they've become, you know, pretty darn good players. So, I definitely think that this can work. So, really quick, let's go over part one and part two when it comes to this NBA draft stuff, right? Uh, on basically on the college side, right? Or college or high school side, how you want to call it? The amateur side, I guess we'll call it that. The amateur side, players can enter the draft from high school. If they go to school, however, they must stay in college. They, uh, they, they, they go to college. They must stay in college for at least two years. So in, in high school players who enroll into the NBA draft that don't hire an agent and are not drafted, they can then go to college. But obviously they must stay those two years when they go. They keep the amateur status and they must go, you know, they, and then they can go to college, and but they must stay those two years. And then on the NBA side, let's build up the G League, and then what we do is we expand to three rounds. The draft to three rounds. And in the first round, if you are a high school player and you are drafted in the first round, then you can be on the main roster from day one. Right? That's if no if and buts about it. Now, if 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 they if if you didn't play well, if you ain't been catching up, or if you have slow, you can just be sent down. But if you are like the Murray Stoudemire, like I said, Kevin Garnett, LeBron James, if you are that good, then you can start from the, on the roster from day one. If you are a high school player drafted in the second round, you have to start in the G League. You have to. No if and buts about it. However, you can be pr promoted. To the main roster after the All Star break, so that you still, so that what you do is you still you get your you know your level, and you get your you know your playing time in, but then you can come up, and then join the main roster and help the big league club. And then the, finally the third round. If you are a high school player drafted in the third round, this newly constructed third round, you must play one year in the G League and you don't get called up. Not at all. So I think this is a great start. This is a great both things can happen. Both things I think could work. And I and I hopefully both things could be, you know, the new way of going about it. It fixes both the NBA and fixes both the college game. And I really do think that these fixes could work. So and this is just coming from me. This is what I think, and I think this really could work. I really do. Now, the NBA has another problem. And it's this tanking. It's happening here in Chicago with my Bulls. And I, I, I'm just, I, it's, it's, it's frustrating. I just, I'm not a big fan of tanking. I'm not. I'm just not. I, I, I don't think you should be, tr you know, I don't think you should be trying to lose 
And I think that's the thing that, 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 that you know that 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 irks me is the fact that they that, that, that they are trying to lose. They are, and uh, that, that that really hurt. That really irks the living crap out of me. And, and it hurts the crap out of me that many teams are doing this as well. And I think it is a competitive competitive balance problem that is going on. And, and basically, because what happens is that. You know, the way they have it now, everything like that, you know, free agents don't go to, you know, don't go a lot of places, basically, seemingly. Seemingly, they, 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 don't, they go to Los Angeles or New York or whatever or anything like that. And, they, they, you know, a lot, of, a lot of free agents from small markets don't stay at home. So they've done a lot of things. They've done, they've got this max contract and this super max and mega max and, every, and, and all types of maxes, right? With the contracts, you know, to try to keep the, the small town, you know, the, the small town players in of there, you know, and and so because of that, because they, they don't leave and go to the other places, now teams have to do something where they have to build through the draft. And things like that, and and that's good. I think that's fun. That's what, what you should build. You know, you know, and you should be to do that. You know, like the Warriors, they built through the draft. You know, and then Kevin Durant comes along in one of the craziest years of ever when the the, the 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 salary cap is goes so high, and then you get Stephen Curry on a contract so low that bam, it puts them together. You have Kevin Durant on the Warriors. You know. But so, but a lot of teams are tanking. They want to get this hot. They want to get like a top pick, and they want to get you know. So they do, they lose and lose and lose. You know, to try to get all of these lottery balls. And the NBA has already changed it so far. Right now, you know, with, with, you know with you know with um with uh, with this year, um I think this upcoming draft, the last one is going to be, I believe that. That what's going to happen is that you're going to have no, like like they do some crazy thing where like the number one the team with the worst record gets 25 percent of the balls in in the lottery and then you know so then that happened and it's it's a whole bunch of crazy stuff it's like it's a whole bunch of like a whole bunch of like lottery number combinations or something like that so it's it's just you know when you think about it, it just it really is just the kind of thing it is. But and really, what they they only do they, they they do the top three picks. So once the you know once the you know the uh, the top three have been set, then they do it they they do it in order of record, you know. So. So a lot of people are losing to try to get. As many lottery balls as they can, so that they can get that, you know, top three pick. And a lot of teams are tanking, and a lot of teams that you know they tried to win, and then when they find out they were out of it, they start tanking. And you know, so and it, it is it is just a mess. And a lot of people hate it. And a lot of people hate it. And there's been so many other things that have come along that people have tried to think about and tried to talk about what could they do. With it, you know, could they do like some type of playoff with the loser loser bracket playoff or or any or something like that? And, I, and a lot of it is just it's whatever. And I, 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 to be perfectly honest, I don't know if you can ever get rid of tanking. I, I really don't know because there, because there will always be a team. I would say it's probably better if we can keep if we keep losing than a team that says let's try and get better and keep winning. There's always going to be something like that. Always going to be something like that in, in all of sports. It does like that in in football. You're going to say they say, well, hey, you know, we we lost, we lost it. Let's go ahead and let's you know let's you know let's play the rookie quarterback. Now it's just be out of it or play the young quarterback, and let's you know that's, that's what New York. I think I think that's what you know the New York Giants tried to do. They were out of the playoffs, so let's you know set aside Eli Manning and let's see what. They didn't even play the young quarterback. They didn't even play Davis. Well, they played Geno Smith, which was what? 
anyway, but you know what I'm saying, right? That's that's what they're thinking. So I don't know if you're ever gonna get rid of tanking. But my fix for that would just be it, w- it would just be stop with all of the multiple number of balls that a team can get lottery balls that a team can have or and a percentage of numbers that a team can have or whatever. Nothing. No, no, no. Here we go. If you are one of the 14 teams not to make the playoffs, then you get one ball. You get one ball. All Those 14 balls with each of the teams that didn't make it, they get put in that thing. And if there are things where it trades or whatever, the same thing, yeah, you know, whatever. Then they get put into that lottery machine, and that lottery machine, blah, 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 blah. then the ball shoots up. And then we see the ball. And then this could be all on live television, right? Live television, so that, because there have been a lot of people saying that the NBA, they, you know, they, you know, they fix these lotteries, you know. You know, does, you know, how does LeBron James go to Cleveland, being from Akron, Ohio? And how does Derrick Rose, you know, go to Chicago, being from Chicago? How does Patrick Ewing, you know, go to New York, you know, you know, New York when the Knicks were down on their luck and so a lot of other, you know, things that they probably, you know, are very, very, you know, suspicious about because of the NBA and the draft and the draft lottery. So you can do this all on live television. You can, you know, you can set this up, being like this, put the water ball in, let the ball and then shoot it up. It says the number one pick of the such and such NBA draft goes to turn the ball around, announce the team, they have won the lottery. Whoever that team may be. You know, if it's the if it's the number fourteen team who just who just missed the playoffs. If it's the if it's the number Eight team, if it's the number one team, whatever. But it, it it's it just is what it is. That's who won the lottery. Then after that, when that team has been announced, then from two down to thirty, you then go by record from worst to first. Number two words, and that's just how it goes. And we just have to deal with it. Like I said, we, you know, even with my fix, there still will be tanking because the teams could still, you know, even though if so, a team would still be trying to fight to get that worst record, right? They would be tanking to get that worst record, so that even though, even if they don't win the lottery, they're guaranteed the number two pick, right? And such and such and such. So, you know. Like I said, there's always going to be. I don't. I said I don't know if you can ever get rid of tanking, but I do think that this will be the the best way to go about doing the lottery and see and, and trying this out first. So this is my fix. So I have fixed the college uh, draft, the high school players, and everything like that with the NBA, and I have fixed. The uh, <laughs> uh, the tanking problem with the uh, National Basketball Association. So I think I think I've done pretty good. Let me know what you guys think. Post down in the comments section below. Do you have any ideas? Post them up. Let me hear them. You know, or do you want to tweak any of my ideas as well? You can do that as well. All down in the comment section. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching. This is your boy AJ Tripp signing off. As always, be good to each other, y'all. Be careful out there. And I am out.